Uh, without further ado, really, I'm going to hand over to Rachel Lambert and Elle Adams, who are from Rural Media, and they'll be telling you about this wonderful BookFlix project. I, when they spoke to me about it in the beginning, I was really excited because it felt like it was doing all the things that we really want from libraries. It's about engaging young people, giving young people an active voice. Um, it, it's about how we how we our stock awareness. It's about inclusion and our, our diversity, and um, and using social media in really creative ways. So um, I think at that point I should hand over to to Rachel and Elle from Bookflix, who will tell you a bit more about the project, a bit more about rural media and hopefully get you really excited uh, to, to get involved. So over to you Rachel and Elle. Thank you so much Sarah, thank you and thanks so much for um, joining us this afternoon everybody. We're absolutely thrilled. I'm, I'm ignoring the fact that there are so many people um, on the webinar and I'm just going to assume it's the five people I can see because that makes it much <laughs> Um, for me to do it. Um, I'm going to, uh, Elle will, you'll hear from Elle in a minute and she can, uh, she will introduce herself and her uh, particular skill set. Before I, um, uh, before I start this, what I did want to say is, unlike Elle, who's a, a social media guru, I started this project, I'm much older than Elle, I'm not going to tell you how much, but a lot older, and I started this project with absolutely no knowledge of TikTok, I didn't have TikTok, I just knew it was the thing that I wish my sons weren't on when they were revising for their exams. And um, I came to it completely green. Uh, I was a kind of, you know, a Facebook mum, and I really wasn't that interested in TikTok at all. I'm now, I'm not an addict. I'm not an addict, but I am a convert. And I do think that it's a really interesting space. And what's really interesting about BookTok particularly is that, and what we've discovered over the, uh, the last eight months is it seems to be, how long it will be for, I don't know, but it seems to be at the moment an incredibly inclusive and diverse space. And it's very much um, author led. And when I say author led, I mean the makers of the content. I mean, the young people who are using it are the ones who are driving the content and are driving um, the landscape on TikTok. And that's a really, really fascinating thing. It's not being dictated to by people in their 50s. It's being dictated by um, people in their, in, you know, in their teens, in their 20s and in their early 30s. And even though old people like me use it, that's that's really who is um, who's in charge of that space. And particularly with BookTok, I found it really encouraging and interesting and exciting to see how many young um, people are engaging with it and using it and doing these extraordinary peer recommendations and really enjoying it and sharing that passion and love of reading. And not just the, the fact of reading, but that kind of visceral kind of um, experience you get from having a book in your hands they're really kind of enjoying the physicality of that and I think once you've been through 11 years of education to still have that love of reading I think is something to really celebrate um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get started um, so we started this so what is Bookflix? Bookflix was precisely precisely that it's it's really about trying to go where young people are. This project is about engaging and exciting young people about reading and about books and about saying that we want to hear their opinion. And we wanted to do that in libraries precisely because we're aware that that is um, a particular demographic that is perhaps difficult to get into libraries. You will have uh, library users that are in that age range, but I imagine it's not your largest user group um, and what's interesting about it is that as soon as we started doing workshops in libraries and sharing the fact and advertising and recruiting for workshops across all of the workshops that we did across all of the libraries we visited what was interesting was that level of engagement and that kind of interest and and amazingly and this might frighten you the amount of young people who said what do you mean the books are free that was a really exciting moment for Elle and I when we were delivering these workshops and they realized they could actually borrow them I know I know you're I know you say it all the time and I know people should know that but it is amazing am I not right Elle how many young people were kind of just going oh what do you mean the books are free and we can just borrow them and bring them back and guess what no one will shoot you if you're late back with your book because that's how I was brought up thinking so book flicks was facilitated by rural media 
It's a youth-led project helping young people make and share creative social media content about the books they love and upskilling and inspiring libraries and festivals to use BookTok as an innovative way to engage with younger audiences locally, and that's really, really important, and nationally. Um, we've gone back one. Um, Bookflix promotes uh, books and the love of reading via social media. Um, this isn't necessarily something that we're in, you know, we're not saying stay on social media, but we are acknowledging that that's where young people are. So if that's where they are, let's go and join them there and let's see whether we can um, get young people to engage uh, in a more meaningful way and perhaps in a, in a really creative way and be aware of the books they're reading and share them with their peer group. Um, Bookflix is supposed to cultivate new audiences and encourage inclusivity and diversity and an understanding of the world beyond perhaps the world that we see in our everyday, in our kind of echo chambers on our social media. We all generally live in a bit of an echo chamber and it's really important to open our, open our eyes to the world out there. To inspire readers to share their book suggestions, these peer reviews and peer recommendations are really, really important and are vital to the success of the project project because um, no matter what I might think about a book I've read, um, somebody who's 17, 18, 19 probably will listen more to their peers than they will to me. Um, learn tried and tested techniques to get you started. Again, I say that earlier about not knowing about TikTok because I really want you to be clear that you know, I did not know about these technologies and these different techniques and these extraordinary, um, uh, you know, shortcut ways to make this content. This is, I promise you, this is not an exclusive um, skill set that you need to go and train in. It's really just about opening up the technology, exploring it and, and, and really seeing how you can utilize it and see how easily you will get the hang of it. I promise you, I, I really will be surprised if you're phased by it. I will be really, really surprised. Um, so we've been working on this project for the last eight months, eight to nine months. It was obviously, it was prepared um, months earlier than that, but Elle and I have been working exclusively, exclusively on this project for the last uh, eight months. And the recommendations in the toolkit, and these slides are a kind of pricey of the toolkit, um, but the recommendations in the toolkit represent those months of research and consultation. And when we say consultation, it's, it's real genuine consultation. We have worked with young people um, in libraries and we've listened and we've understood the way in which they like to use social media, what they engage with, how they engage, what they find interesting and exciting. And it might be that it works too fast for me. It blows my brain how quickly they can switch on and, and click uh, onto different pieces of content, but they can. And they do and that's what they want to see they want to see that speed of thought and that speed of content that doesn't mean it's not meaningful that doesn't mean it's not exciting or creative but it is often fast-paced um, and and just try not to be put off by that go with it they're the ones making the content after all so we have really listened. Um, we've worked directly with participants in that age range, that 13, uh, 13 to 30 age group. And we've been watching and understanding the way they interact with their social media, both as users and importantly, as content makers. Um, and we're also really crucially, really, really aware. Um, and many, uh, many years ago, eight years ago, I spent four years working um, on a heritage project in a library and I watched how hard librarians worked and library staff work. We're really, really aware that not everybody is necessarily a librarian. It's a, it's a, a, a real kind of team effort and there's a whole different range of library staff that you have on the front line. And each library is different. And I can't imagine any of you are overstaffed, but I know that many of you are understaffed. Um, and we're really, really aware of that. So the toolkit is scalable. The toolkit is aware of your capacity and aware of your um, the variety of inner city and small town and even rural libraries that you are um, that you you know that all of those different different examples of. Um, of resource that you have to that you have to provide. Um, so we're really, really keen to support library services and to utilize this toolkit in ways that best suit 
you. Therefore, we recommend that each library handpick the options or the option that works for you and your team and your capacity. It really is scalable. You can do one. You can choose to do none. We really hope you do none. We hope you do more than one, but you can just do one and it might make a difference. But there are six different options to choose from or you could do all of them. That would be really exciting. OK, um, L, please introduce yourself and tell them why they should bother. Before you do, sorry, just to, just to uh, say, a couple of people said they're having sound problems, which I think is to do with the browser, not the not the not the recording. But we just to say, we will be sending out a recording later. So if you are having problems, then we'll make sure you get the recording. I'm so sorry if you're struggling. We just got a manic woman who's flailing her arms around <laughs> a lot. Then I do apologise. Hopefully, you'll be able to catch up on a record. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Sorry, over to L. Thank you. Um, hi everyone. Nice to. Um... I guess cyber meet you all. My name's Elle and I'm a social media content producer and I'm also a marketing consultant. So it's my job to help organizations and freelancers and artists create content that connects meaningfully with audiences of any, any age. Um, as Rachel said, we've been working on this for eight months. Um, so I was brought into the project to facilitate all the young people in the libraries and all the people that we've worked with to make that content, but also to support them to um, know how it needs to look, what's the best way to do it and, and how to get it out there. Um, so I know social media and maybe TikTok as well can be quite scary. It's this big sort of loud world. Um, what I really want to impress upon all of you is that you, it, you don't have to love it in order to in order to take part in this and in order to use the toolkit. Social media is a tool out there that is, we know, really, really powerful, um, especially when it comes to connecting young audiences. So you don't have to love it, but you can still utilize it and, and do what you want with it to connect with the people that you want to. So we know that there are 1 billion monthly active people on it. And BookTok itself actually has 46.6 billion views. That means 46.6 videos have been watched and counting that are people recommending books, recommending things to read and authors and writers and all, all of that, all of that stuff. So. That's really exciting, I know, for you guys. Um, it's inclusive, as Rachel said, it's diverse. You know, there's all these different types of content makers that are that are really connecting with, with their with their tribes online and recommending, you know, stuff to read. So you can connect globally and nationally with, with those with those people. Um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 really powerful. Thanks, Rach. Um, so there's 17.6 million and counting British people that are that are on TikTok. And we've also learned through our research that 17 percent of those people are more likely to make an impulse purchase of something they've seen in the app. Now, I know it says purchase there. That's because, you know, if you see something on TikTok, oh, I want to buy that moth. That looks great. They might do that. But also it means that they're 17 percent more likely to do what the video is recommending or to borrow or to go into that library or to purchase whatever it is. But they're 17 percent more likely to act on that recommendation that they're seeing in the video, which means it's great for libraries and uh, uh, literary festivals to kind of say, this book is great, why don't you come and borrow it? It's really, really powerful in terms of bringing people into library spaces. Um, yeah, it's it's really powerful. It's, it's, it's a way to connect meaningfully with a captive. They're there, you know, 17.6 million British people, but they're also hungry. They're looking for this content. You know, they want they want to see more stuff like this. So it's really, really worthwhile having a go at. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to show you now is a couple of examples of um, TikToks, book talk, sorry, that we made um, in some of our um, workshops. Now, we um, predominantly we're a we're a West Midlands based company and we focused predominantly in the Midlands um, but we worked with um, across the Midlands in different libraries we worked with librarians in Hereford in Ledbury I am reading this I can't remember the list I apologize Hedford, uh, Hereford Ledbury Colwell Ross uh, Woodhull Spa Lincoln Coventry Warwick Wolverhampton and Woollenhall libraries um, and um, just in case you were one of those librarians and you're here hello thank you very much for your um, for putting up with us, for having us take over your library momentarily for our workshop and for being so accommodating um, and also for feeding in, you know, these librarians also just to be very clear that uh, we, we asked 
uh, these librarians to feed in to, um, to the toolkit. So it wasn't just me and Elle going, we think they should do this. We have absolutely no idea um, what your job is like and nor should we. So we were really, really clear about um, consulting. And that's where an awful lot of the ideas came from. We were able to tweak and we were able to change and amend depending on, um, as we said, um, capacity, depending on accessibility. We altered language so that we weren't too kind of filmy and, and all of that kind of stuff, um, just so that it made it accessible. It made it something that you feel that it was able, you're able to achieve rather than kind of just thinking, I can't get anywhere near this. Um, we'd much rather that it was um, that it was really accessible and that you felt able to do it. Um, so this was a young a young man who joined us for one of our workshops. His name is Rory, um, and he worked with one of our um, uh, workshop leaders. And he made uh, this little book talk very quick. They're very very quick little TikTok book talk about his favourite book. I hope you can hear it. Um, let's see if you can. It's a very interesting book and I want people to read it because it says about real life issues. It shows like how the world is and how it's a strange world and then how that person is, is feeling. The book is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Brilliant. Very good, Rory. And then this is Ebony's book. Um, very different, but again, really showcasing the library that it was made in. Um, and this is Ebony's book talk. How can colour help us feel? How can colour help us heal? How does colour change our perspective of a book that we're reading if we sit on a green chair or a pink chair or a blue chair, a yellow chair, a black chair, a different pink chair, an orange chair, a purple chair, a black and blue chair, a red chair. Colour therapy is all about colour and healing. So two really simple, lovely book talks there. And interestingly, they both chose to have their book reveal at the end. There's a couple of different ones now that I'm gonna show you that chose to do it the other way around. And what's interesting is that creatively, again, you can, you can kind of tease your audience into them thinking, oh, I wonder what book they're talking about. Um, and other people choose to show the book um, and then talk about why they're recommending it. So there's a number of different ways. And I can't imagine that we could ever count the number of ways um, that you can make them, but there's two very, uh, very different ways. I'm going to play you these, but the, um, I'm just flagging it now in case you think, oh, I can't hear anything. The, because they've got music on, Zoom, oh, I don't know why, Zoom isn't a huge fan of us playing music on these films. Um, so they're much better for you to look at later, but you can see the, um, just the kind of technique and how they've chosen to do it. And you'll be able to read what they've said about them, but it's much more funky and much more enjoyable with the music. And Elle will go through all of those details in terms of compliance and music and all of those things in a little while. So don't worry, you might be able to hear this, you you probably won't. So again, lovely, simple book talk there. That was Lucy, one of our workshop participants who listened and learned and then actually did that at home and sent that to us afterwards because she was just absorbing all of the information, wasn't she, Elle? And she just was working and she knew what she wanted to do. So she went home and she did it as soon as she got home. Um, I think the, they, the, the people that we worked with, the young people we worked with, they, it seemed to have a really interesting impact on them. And as I say, these two particularly, the first two, they are actually present in their film. You don't have to be, they, they absolutely don't have to be at all. Um, but there, there are a number of ways you can do it. But, you know, obviously Lucy decided not to be in her film, just as impactful. <laughs>
um, gorgeous Marion there, um, her book. And, and again, we, when we talked about um, what books you can recommend, when we talked to our, um, our young people, it's really, if you can find the book in the library, it's a book worth recommending. That was our, the way that we went. So they were kind of going, oh, we can't use a graphic novel. You can absolutely use a graphic novel. You can absolutely promote the reading and enjoyment of a graphic novel, of a textbook, of an autobiography, of anything, a fiction, of course. But the bottom line is our, our guidance was if you can find it in a library, you can do a book talk about it. So yeah, get on with it. Do a book talk about it. Um, good. All right. So I'm just going to flick through the options now. Um, and again, there's more detail in the actual tool toolkit itself. And we're going to send this out to you um, so you can you can have a look um, and you can see for yourself. This is a kind of pre-seed version of it. Um, but essentially, the first the first option is the simplest option. Make a book talk shelf. Find an area in your library. It might be one shelf. It might be a stack. Um, but find a an area in your library and turn it into a book talk shelf. And basically, we've, we've talked about capacity. We've talked about how we realize that you are all are very, very different. You work very differently. You all have different local authorities. It must be mind blowing. However, let's just think about Think about the capacity you have. You might also, I know the library I worked with, and I'm sure you do too, they have um, uh, volunteers over the summer. I don't know if that's still a thing, uh, but certainly um, young people volunteered to come into libraries over the summer holidays, particularly. And that was really, really good um, because they were, you know, you could give this job to them, for example, because they know all about that stuff and they can show you how to use it and, you know, that, that's that's a really good thing to get a young volunteer to do. Um, but also you may have a team member um, or a member of staff who's really up for it and crack on. Um, it's just a question of researching that month or that two monthly um, top recommendations online, on social media, on BookTok, on Instabook, Bookstagram, sorry, I mean these words. Um, but just to have a look, stock them, mark the shelf really clearly. I'll tell you a very quick anecdote. When we were working out at Hay Festival last year, they had TikTok at Hay Festival uh, for the first time. And the uh, the book, um, the bookshop, uh, person who runs the bookshop fairly begrudgingly said to me the only shelf they had to restock at the end of every single day was the book talk shelf. And that was the shelf that was stacked with um, books that had been recommended on book talk. So I'm don't you make of that what you will. I'm just sharing that because I found that absolutely fascinating. Um, so option one, make a book top shelf. Option two, devote a corner of your library to creating content, um, probably near your reception desk, near where there's always a member of staff potentially, because otherwise stuff might go walking. Um, it probably won't uh, because it'll be nearby you and you can always clamp it down or, you know, they're not very expensive. Um, but find a table, get a corner near your book top shelf, have a ring light or a little LED light that can clip to the phone um, and a chair and a mini tripod um, and maybe even a pile of that month's uh, book talk recommendations and leave a list of instructions. They're all on the appendices with the toolkit. Ella's made an extraordinary number of, of appendices to go with it with um, uh, you know, a list of guidance and rules and instructions with posters, with signage, all sorts of things. Um, so have a look on there um, and yeah, create a book talk corner. Um, you can also buy, sorry, to, you can also no, buy, no, no, just no. put it in the chat, you can buy the ring light, all of the, we got all the stuff that we needed to run the workshops, me and Rachel, we just got it on Amazon, so really, really affordable, so it's, so it's worth looking, we're not recommending you spend loads of money on all this crazy equipment, you don't need that, it just needs to be accessible and workable. Absolutely, and also you don't need to use Amazon, if you refuse to use Amazon, fair enough, they sell them in shops too, they sell them in shops too. Um, make a library book talk. So um, this is where you can yourself, you know, I know it's, it looks like it's going to take a long time. It won't. It's a, it's a really nice thing to do. Sarah will tell you about a number of libraries across the country. You have really, really cool um, TikTok uh, platforms where they share their book recommendations uh, monthly or even weekly. Um, and it's just about people who are excited about sharing the book that they've read, but they've made their own and they make their, and then they kind of, they place themselves in their own library and make it an exciting place to be. You know, make sure you 
share your personality, um, think about recommending your book and showcasing your library. Um, option four, um, ask one of your users, ask one of your library users to see what they want to they want to do. Do you want to do a review? They're bringing a book back. Maybe they were bringing it back. Do you want to do a review of it? It's it's something that young people particularly um, won't be phased by because they're aware that they think that they think that everyone, you know, everyone's opinion, you know, is important. So make sure that, you know, you can you can actually offer that opportunity. And if you don't want to be front and center, you don't want to do the library one enable them to do theirs it's about offering an opportunity to see if they want to make theirs um and it's and it's just about yeah creating that opportunity really um and 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 showing that you are a space where you understand this this kind of common language this common very youthful space um and you know and encouraging people to come back and do another one next time but then they have control over it their book talk they have control over it that you know they decide whether they're going to share it or not but it's really interesting when you ask a young person for their opinion about a book that they've that they've read and if they love it oh my gosh maybe they'll come back and do more um, option five is running a workshop. Now, you know, you that might that might be a fearful thing for you. It might be that you've got people within your team that are quite happy to run a workshop. It's really not as scary as it seems. If you're thinking, oh my gosh, no, I couldn't possibly do that. It's really not as scary as it seems. Actually, once you get started, correct me if I'm wrong, Elle, they kind of take on a life of their own, don't they? Um, and you do just find that young people, you kind of set the environment up, you set it up, all of the details, all of the... Um, uh, you know, the guidelines and the instructions are all in the toolkit, you know, have a little look when you get a chance over the next few days, over the next week or so, um, and see what you think. It just, just make sure that you, you flag it, make sure that you recruit in the right places, make sure your young people who are, who are there, who are precious, you know, make sure that they know it's happening. They can tell their friends and they tell their friends, you know, use local youth groups, use clubs um it's about creating it's about showcasing the love of reading that's why we're all here let's face it that's why we're all here and then option six is essentially a kind of combination of all five but it's really about utilizing those small medium and large campaigns and really using that book talk and vox pop kind of um, format um, think about creating a narrative or a series so you could look at the same author over a number of books you could look at a theme or a genre um, and look at those books um you know whether that's um you know ya books or or whether it's classics um whether it's horror whether it's you know romance teenage romance whatever it might be um you can find that they they do they do kind of get traction and people will come back and see what you're recommending again um and again the capacity for each one of these things will grow um but you can you can kind of get a feel of it you know your space you know your team you know your library users you know far more than we know about what you're going to be able to um to do and l talk a little bit about how often you think that um people should or would be best to share a film is there a kind of guide there's no there's no sort of set rule with with how to do this um the general rule with social media is if you're consistent you're going to do well but the consistency doesn't necessarily need to mean all the time consistency just needs to mean that you keep doing it so you could do it once a week you could do it once every three weeks you could do it once every two months as long as you're consistent and people know to expect your content you'll be absolutely fine so it's really up to you looking at the capacity that you have the stuff that you have the time that you have and what you're able to maintain and make a consistent plan based off the back of that superb thank you so much great um yeah there you go so top tip again this is all in there encourage viewers to keep coming back get them hooked onto a series of your videos leave a cliffhanger can you believe it? Oh yeah, that, that's a good one. We we found yeah. that like if you if you have if you have a book or recommendation that you know it's too there's too much to fit into one video, what you could do to keep people coming back is you could spread that out over multiple videos and then you're kind of you know you've got more content, but also people are gonna come back because they're gonna want to know more about the book. And they will come back, they will come back. Great. Um, L, please talk about co uh, compliance and the legalese, because I know it's something that we'll probably be asked about. Um, so yeah, off you go. So uh, there are loads of, you know, rules with social media. These are the ones that, you know, the sort of golden ones to, to, to make sure you're, you're abiding by. So it's always worth remembering that if you're doing this, 
library users, people that you're doing, is they need to be over 13 to have a social media account in the first place. So no one under 13 should be posting under so on this on social media at all. So you need to you need to be aware of that. Um, it's really important to not use music and sounds that aren't copyright free. So when you're when you're making any content, the music or the sound that you want to put over it is will be available in in the social media app, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is. It will be there, but you need to check that it's there before putting it on. What you can't do is just record any old piece of music and stick it over the top if it's not available within the app, because then you might be getting into sort of tricky territory. So always check it's there first. Um, everything's on there. So it's highly unlikely that it won't be, but check. Keep it short. 30 seconds to one minute is always a really good rule of thumb for any form of video content on social media anyway but it's also worth noting that if you're using any form of music if you're using a short amount of music anyway you're going to be all right so it's just a best good thing to bear in mind don't ever use any imagery or photographs that aren't copyright free so don't just go and google and get any old image and, and stick it on um, there are really good websites um, i'll put them in the chat after i've stopped speaking um, where you can get copyright free images that are really really nice um, i'll put them in the chat um, yeah, and also, you know, if you are using, if you've got permission from a photographer to, to use their um, imagery in the TikTok, you know, make sure you credit them if you can. Um, don't ever film anyone without their consent. It doesn't matter what their age, it doesn't matter who they are, don't ever film anyone without their consent and put it on social media. You must get consent be before posting it. Um, and make sure the content is always captured on the appropriate device. So what we mean by that is, you know, facilitate people making book talks, facilitate it happening in your library space, but don't film on your own phone. You know, encourage them to do it, to do it on their device. Don't ever do it on your own phone. Facilitate it, encourage it to happen, but don't use your own device to do that. Great, Elle, could you just um, talk about the uh, fair use of, because if they're using the actual book, that's okay, right? Yeah, yeah, so we, oh yeah, we went through all of this. So um, in terms of fair usage, if you sat down and read the whole book, uh, the author might be like, uh, that's not great because you've just given away everything. So make sure that you're not giving away loads and loads and loads of stuff. It's okay to read a bit from the book. What is best to do, what we found is the most powerful is recommend why you think the book is really good. People don't really wanna see someone else read it. They could just get the audio book if they were gonna do that. It's better to say, this is really good. Here's a little bit of it and here's why, instead of just, I'm just gonna read directly from it. Then you might be, in tricky compliance territory, but also be a little bit boring. Great stuff. Great. Exactly that. Exactly that. Um, you know, I think, I think as well, I think, you know, that's exactly right. It, that, that fair use is really important. You'll see that on all of the, all four of the book talks we shared, the book is absolutely front and center, whether it's at the beginning or at the end or halfway through. Um, but you know, we never give away the ending. That's just, that's just not on, is it? Um, uh, and, uh, and, um yeah i think that's i think that's everything yeah brilliant thank you very much Earl. oh yeah formatting formatting so very quickly these are all the different ways that you can view video content on a mobile phone device i know that just like looks like a load of crazy numbers but those are all the different ways that a video would look the best best possible way is the nine by 16 where, where the little arrow is pointing that it means that when you look at video content it'll be the shape of your phone so it's the most that people would possibly be able to see. It's really important when you capture any content on when you're facilitating, you know, a young person doing it, if, if you're doing it on a work phone, whatever it is, don't ever hold the phone like this, because that means that when the footage ends up on social media, it's going to look ill in the middle. You want it. You want to hold the phone like this so that so the footage is captured and shown as best it can possibly be nine by 16. Basically, always hold your phone like this and you'll be absolutely fine. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Right, thank you. Look at that. We've got to the end. And um, uh, and I think now it's time for um, a QA. and um, I don't know if you've got a gazillion questions. Obviously, you don't have the toolkit in front of you. We're going to send that out to you over the next um, 24 <coughs> hours. Um, uh, but essentially, it is a, um, a kind of meatier version of what we've just gone through. So it will be really interesting if you do have any questions. I might um, stop sharing if that's all right, Sarah. Is yeah, that a good please. idea? Yeah, that would be great. And then we can... We can see people a bit better oh gosh how terrifying 
So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, both of you. Um, right, we, we have got a lot of questions, a lot yeah. about the, the sort of compliance issues and um, all sorts of things. So I probably won't ask people to read them out themselves. I'll just go through them if that's OK, because that will be that will get us more speedily through them, I think. So um, the first one that I had was, let me just go back right to the beginning, was um, yeah, under 16. So that was from Ellie, who was asking about um, uh, under, photographing under 16. So she says, how do you manage permissions for under 16s to film themselves or was it not a problem? I think, well, I think Elle nailed it. I think the bottom line is what you have to be very clear about before you even start is who is the content for? And if you're enabling the content to be made, you're making it on their machine. So you never actually have uh, ownership of the footage. So if they want help filming themselves doing a TikTok, then you can set them up with the tripod. They're putting it all on their device and you don't ever have ownership of that footage. And I think that's a really clean way of doing it. If however, you're, you've got a work device, I mean, I don't know, maybe your library buys you an iPhone. I don't know. I, maybe libraries are different now. Um, but they, but I would say that, um, you know, I, I think you just have to be really, really clear about with the user. I, would you like to would you like to do a review? It's for our social media channel. Are you happy to do that? Then probably what's safest is it is if you get a um, I don't know whether you do a kind of consent form, but it's essentially a kind of multiple sharing. So if the young person shares it and tags the library in, everyone's happy. Um, I would. I, what would you say, Elle? Would you agree with that? I would agree. Someone's also put um, whether it would be a GDPR issue in school underneath that question. So that kind of covers it both. Rachel and I, as well as this project, Rachel and I have worked on loads of other projects um, together uh, as producers where we've worked with schools and young people. So at Rural Media, what we do is we have um, consent forms and compliance forms that we send out to participants anyway. So I don't know if libraries do that. Um, but it's always best to check with, you know, what the school needs to do, what the local government requires and what the library requires. If what, what we would do is we would say, OK, we've got this big project. If you're a participant on it, you tick this form to agree that you're happy to be photographed. And you're happy to be included in content. The parent can tick it if they're under 16. The child can tick it if they want to. Um, and then everyone's covered. It's worth it's worth setting that up beforehand. It's really easy to do. Um, really easy to implement very good and it's also just worth remembering that they don't have to be in it and they can still do a yeah. presentation without their face the name doesn't have to be anywhere near it of course but it can still be their words it can still be their shots and that's just as uh, that's just as empowering for them as a young person and there's yeah. faith nowhere near it and yeah. i think it's just yeah. about being really clear about who the content is for um and, and ultimately book flicks as a project is about empowering young people to make their own um content so you are facilitating that if you make a if you do a workshop we've got work devices that we use and we go in and do that we don't personally own or have access to that footage um, the young people make it on their devices or on the work devices that we have and then it gets um it gets got rid of but i know that when um you know a million years ago when i worked for five seconds in a library they did have um uh you know uh, consent forms and they did go out and if we ever did an education project or we ever did any photography then they would be signed if they're under 18 then they got signed by a parent and if they're over 18 they signed in themselves but that's only if you get that far down the line ultimately book flicks is um, a facilitation you are essentially yeah. enabling these young people to make their own content i hope that's clear yeah and, and i'd say if in doubt you know if in doubt, if you're not sure about any of the compliance, oh God, have they signed any? I don't, if in doubt, facilitate it to be anonymized. So encourage them to not be in it and film the book, you know, da, 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 encourage that. Brilliant. I would say. Is that clear, Sarah? Do you think that's... Yeah, I think so. And and, and, and Lucy's also asked about, are there consent forms in the toolkit? I don't know if there's... I mean, I, I imagine most libraries would have their own, but maybe... They would, but of... you know what? We're amending it all the time, mm -hmm. aren't we, Al? We could probably put together a... a template. A might be template. Yeah, yeah we put together... Yeah. What we'll do is we'll make it into a Word document, if that's all right, Al, and then you can put yeah. in your um, library, your name, and you'd have to have somebody who's signing it as well. Um, but as as Sarah said, I imagine you've got uh, your own consent forms, but we can absolutely add that. God, it's going to be about that deep. <laughs> That'd be really go, what are all these appendices for? 
And then um, Rebecca's asked a quick question. Would this work on Instagram too? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I think you thought I made that up, didn't you? No, it is. <laughs> Bookstagram. I know it sounds like a made up word. It is a made up word. Elle, talk about Bookstagram. Yeah, you, you can definitely do that. So um, we've the way we're talking about, we called it BookTok because that's the sort of most famous one. But Bookstagram is a separate hashtag. It's the same thing. It's, it's just on Instagram. Um, yeah, 100%. Um, we've talked and I put in the chat and we talked during the toolkit about cap cut so we recommend that whenever you make any of this content or whenever you facilitate anyone to make it you make everything on cap cut that means that once you've made that book talk once you've made that piece of content you could then put it on Instagram or TikTok or both so it would just work either way you're just covering two birds one stone they don't really need to be different in their format to be honest um, Instagram every day is trying to become more like TikTok anyway um, that's just the way that the social media world is working. So, uh, yeah, hundred percent, it could definitely work on Instagram. The only thing I'd say is it's worth checking if you're going to be putting hashtags and things underneath the hashtags that you see on TikTok would not necessarily be the same as on Instagram. So make sure you do your research about what you'd use before and don't just double up. That would be the only thing that needs to be different. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and talking about hashtags, where is the best place to find a recent list of book top titles? Is there an easy way to find a summary of titles from the previous year or as we likely have slightly older stock? It's a really good question. Elle, would you say that it's just a question of spending kind of 20 minutes or so on TikTok? Yeah, going on the app. You, you could, there's there's articles every day by um, people sort of, you know, journalists and sort of looking into it. So you could just do some Googling and see what journalists are recommending, but that's their take on it. The yeah, best exactly. thing is what Rachel said is to go within the app and see what people are making videos about. Um, Having a, having a look what's popular because what's popular on booktop might necessarily be what's popular on bookshelves in bookstores. It might be a little bit different. So best places to go where it's, people are talking about it. I've just seen a question actually, Sarah, about, may I ask answer the question from Caitlin about um, mm -hmm. about creating a TikTok as a member of staff, would I need mm -hmm. to use a work device? May mm -hmm. I just answer that one quickly? Yes, of course you can. I'm, I'm really aware, I think I said earlier on, I'm really, really aware that you're all navigating completely different kind of rules and regs when it comes to your local authority. Um, and, and I really, really get it. It must be really difficult. I know that I know that some local authorities, naming no names, uh, that we've worked in, um, the platforms and they and the are uh, are uh, are uh, what, what shall I say? Uh, kind of ruled with an uh, with a with a kind of um, yeah, they're they're ruled by someone else who maybe don't buy into kind of uh, how important this might be for libraries to do. Um, my suggestion would be in that respect, uh, Sarah, I don't know what you how you agree about this, but if you are a member of staff, surely you can make a TikTok about you and your job and your book recommendations and flag that you're in this particular library. Is that OK across the local authorities? Yeah, I mean, some, some libraries will have sort of, um, I suppose, codes of conduct about what yeah. you should or shouldn't say as a, as, a, as a member of staff. So I think, you know, you, you need to bear those things in mind. But of I course. think if you were making a book talk about a book that you loved, you know, for your on your own personal kind of for your own personal, you know, to, to, to recommend via TikTok, that, that's absolutely fine. So I think it's just about being mindful of your, the, 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 the rules about, you know, codes of conduct in your in your library. But I think recommending books something better, really. Yeah, um, and there are there are two or three about TikTok being blocked. And I think we've, we've picked up on that, that, you know, some yeah. local authorities will will block TikTok, we know that, but there are other ways of, uh, other ways of... of, of but just to be clear, they're booked, they're blocked for you. They're not mm. blocked for the young people and the book and the library users who are coming into your library. And again, this is about enabling other people to make content. So if you're, even if you're a facilitator, you don't have to make it yourself. It's not about your local authority. It is about that young person being facilitated to make their book recommendation. So yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry if it is blocked and you're not allowed to. There's nothing, as you said, Sarah, as long as it's within your code of conduct, there's nothing stopping you from making a TikTok or a book talk about a book you love. I can't imagine why that would be um, problematic. Um, yeah I, yeah and there's, there's always other social media accounts as well like we yeah. were saying before you can you can do exactly everything we described and put it on Instagram instead and just do that it, it, in that way and it would still have the same impact um, I'm just going to check is anybody here if you can just unmute yourself if you are from BCP libraries I, I couldn't yeah um oh. my name's Amy with um 
I work in uh, BCP libraries. Oh, brilliant! Thank you, Amy. Because we were just we were just before the just before this webinar started, um, Elle was talking about an advert you put out about uh, TikTok. Did, are, we, are you able to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so it's um, a project that we've um, started um, to engage, try and engage young people in our library. Um, book talk um, we've called it um, book talkers and so we recruited we've got some literacy officers who um, sort of work with children and young people across um, BCP council and we put out some adverts including on TikTok itself <laughs> to recruit some young people um, and we got we got quite a good response and so in our main Bournemouth library and our main pool library we now have um, a sort of small group of volunteers that come each Saturday to the Bournemouth library and the pool library and generate content. We did get a little bit of funding um, to buy some equipment so we bought some of the equipment that um, Rachel and Elle listed earlier. Um, luckily the council provided us with a couple of quite old phones I'm gonna say but we <laughs> we do make them work <laughs> and um, we got some ring lights um, and just a few a few a few of little bits of equipment and yes yeah, quite um, early doors but they've you know we've generated they've generated some content so far and it's quite interesting to see how they engage with our um, our stock and our collection so brilliant yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. I'm also loving the fact that you're answering each other's questions. This is so great. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. This um, is always the best thing about library webinars. You get a oh, whole load of sort you of... You talk to each other. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so check us out as well. We'll, yeah, check us out on TikTok. <laughs> loving your content. It looks really, really good, guys. It's really nice to see. Yeah, so well, well done to BCP Libraries. I was saying how brilliant you were, particularly during the lockdown, with all your all your film content and all the creative ways that you were engaging with your communities during during lockdowns and so on. So we always liked what BCP Libraries. Oh, did. thank you yeah. so much. I still have like um, toddlers come up to me in supermarkets that I've never even met and go, "Oh, you're the singing lady like, <laughs> from lockdown." So yeah, that's quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is so great. <laughs> uh, and Elle, you've just put on, thank you for that one about the hashtags. So do you want to just talk a little bit about the hashtags you've recommended? Yeah, so I've put a couple, in, I've put a few Are in the, the chat that, that though, we've Elle? used. Are those recommendations actually in the toolkit itself? Uh, I don't think so, but they're all over <laughs> all over the um, Bookflix videos on the Bookflix channel. So you, you could have a look there, but um, maybe we will include them actually. So you've yeah, got them, I've put them that. in the... Yeah, let's um, do in, in the chat. Um, basic, I've put a few there. Basically, have a look what other book talk creators are uh, using. If they're using it, it means they're using it for a reason. So it's worth looking into. Um, it's also worth, you know, looking into what sort of genres and themes are surrounding the book, because what you might find is that, like, you know, for example, if you put in, I don't know if it's a gothic horror or something like that, if you hashtag that, you might get people that are interested in art or similar other creative outlets. Um, seeing those hashtags that aren't necessarily you know into book talk themselves but they'd see it because they're into that kind of artistic format so it's worth having sort of thinking outside the box um, around that as well uh, but basically have a look what's out there um, have a look what's popular uh, and use those um, yeah someone's answered it but FYP um, it just basically means for your page um, they're really really secretive about how the algorithm works whether it works or not who knows but it's worthwhile doing it I do it so you know it's worth worth having a go it basically means that um if you put that hashtag on it it's 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 pushing it out um to people's for you page so those who don't know on TikTok you see either um content from people that you're following or content that it, it TikTok thinks you will enjoy most people watch the page of stuff it thinks you will enjoy if you put for your page on that you're pushing it into that sort of feed so it's worth having a go I know. I can see all your. I, I'm. I. It's another language, isn't it? It's, I kind of bore myself sometimes. <laughs> no, not at all. It's fascinating. It's absolutely. But it is another language. But it's also not a scary place. I would say, of course, you have to be careful um, that you're ticking the right boxes. Somebody put, you know, that they're worried about. Um, let me find it. Worried about kind of um, safeguarding on the app. Um, and I think the important. I think the way that we got around it. Of course, you've got to be over thirteen to do it. 
that still feels incredibly young. But um, all I would say is that, you know, we talked a lot about um, this during the project with our, our team. Um, and we've talked to parents, and we've talked to um, library staff, and we've talked to young people. And the bottom line is they're going to use it. So there's a way in which we can make sure they do it safely. Um, and I think that's the most important thing and that they understand it. And if, you know, and if they understand it and they're taken through it step by step and they understand the um, issues and the dangers, then they're going to be um, safer because of it. So I think the bottom line is they're going to use this stuff. So let's make sure they use it safely. Thank you. Um, just I, this is a, this is amazing. We've got we've got some 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 shameless plugs coming in for various. It's so cool. Like I love them. it. Um, so, By the way. so we've got a Norfolk one, a Somerset one, and a Blackpool one. I think I saw earlier on. So thanks for all of those. Anyone else that wants to add their shameless plugs, please do. Yeah, come we, on. We to collect those all. Oh, yeah. They really are really helpful for us. You so save the chat at the end as well. <laughs> and um and and also I've lost the one with, um, about. Who was it that's just said that they? Oh goodness, we've got so many going on here. Sorry, I'm just. Uh, uh, oh, Loretta, who's created bookstagram content at Loretta and dot, dot and books. So yes. um, have a look at that as well because uh, we can look at how that's working on Instagram. It's great, isn't it? Right. I mean, we would say that, I mean, Elle, correct me if I'm wrong. It was it was a young person that we were working with that told us about CapCut, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, all so Instagram and TikTok enable you to create content within it and edit it within the app. And while that's fine and you can do that, we recommend using CapCut, which I've put in the chat, which is a whole separate program for editing. The reason why we suggest that is that it's easier, better to use. And it's the way that they've made the app is so that the content looks the best it can possibly be once it comes to posting. Um, the editor in um, Instagram is way harder to use than it is in TikTok. Um, so we would suggest just creating everything in CapCut, like I said before, so that you could put it on Instagram and TikTok or both or one or the other, because it's just a, it's just a better way of doing it. Um, yeah, the um, I can't remember what I was going to say then. Um, Instagram is the, the editor is quite difficult to use. So I would suggest going with CapCut so that you know that that, that everything is covered. Um, I, I had something interesting to say that's completely yeah. left my mind. Was it, so was it about, because I know you were going to mention it, was it about templates? Yes, that's it. <laughs> you can tell that Rachel and I have worked together <laughs> for ages because she knows. Uh, yeah, <laughs> templates. So there are really good templates out there. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers, but me and Rachel were talking about this before. iMovie used to do a thing where they had like a trailer uh, template where you could just stick an image in and it would show what a trailer would look like. There are loads of really good templates out there. For um, making book talks, it's just Google it. Book talk template. That there are loads out there. There are even ones built in within the CapCut um, app. Uh, it's worth having a look at that just to get used to it. But we really suggest that you be creative about it. Absolutely. So, but, you yeah, know, absolutely. go with but, that as a starter. But be yeah. creative. I mean, what do they say? You got to you got to um, uh, imitate before you innovate. So you know, yeah, yeah, play yeah. and have a look and see see what people do. And you know what? The most important thing I would say, and I know we're you know, I, you know, if you're working in libraries, you know, people, people are weird. We're weird. We, pe you know, we are. I understand that. But they're, they're also fabulous. And, and what I would say is that learn from young people. So when young people come into your library and they're, if they're interested in doing it, the, the, you know, the most the most interesting times we've ever had is when we kind of go, we don't know. Let's look it up. Let's find out together. Yeah. Find out yeah. together. We learn from each other. We whack it in a toolkit. And they're the ones who've told us that that's how they've liked to do it. And that's what they figured out is the easiest thing to do. So if, we, if yeah. when you're talking about facilitating, it is just, it's just a really interesting thing to kind of say, well, how would you do it? And let's find out together. Because we didn't know about these things before we started. Elle did, but, you know, because she's just a social media guru. But I didn't have a clue. And now I'm I'm not bad. I'm not bad at it. I'm not as good as Elle, but I'm not bad at it. And I think she's it's good about playing <laughs> and looking and figuring it out and not being afraid afraid of it it's yeah really just to say fun. as well actually what me and Rachel learned from running those workshops um that was really powerful is that when she's saying you know imitate to educate or I can't remember she said it better than that um we with with anything 
if, if, if you know if you were to sit down and run the watch you know we've given you all the appendices in order to do that you could do that but if you don't show those examples of what's already out there and then you went go ahead and make it people would be like what and, and it might take a bit longer showing the stuff showing what's already out there is so powerful because that's how that's how young people's minds work now they see it and they oh i know exactly what okay i speak the language boom i'm off it's really really powerful so it's really worth doing a bit of research before seeing what's out there and then showing them um because it we, we found that it was a lot um it was powerful and um we found some we, we made some really good stuff off the back of that yeah absolutely it's just good fun it's not weird it's not frightening it's just good fun and we're getting books out there I mean that's at the end of the day where we are getting book recommendations out there and and if you can facilitate that process and get peers to recommend to one another uh, you know it's it's a it's a no-brainer it's really good fun and it doesn't take long and you'll get quicker and better at it without question uh, I think for me, it, it just seems like, you know, so I think somebody put in the chat about, you know, how to engage young people. 